Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you. My name is Ben Nicklin. Um, if you haven't got my contact yeah. details, they're there. Um, I have spoken, obviously, to a lot of you this morning. Um, nice to see a few new faces. Um, so those of you who have worked with Tiger for a, a, a while now will recognise, you know, the people in this room. But it's important to say that, you know, we've got some familiar faces that aren't here. I know a lot of you deal with Sharon, um, with Sally, etc. But we've had some new additions into the team as well. So we've got Louise and Richard. Um, and, and it really helped kind of take our business even further forward, along with the, the, the sales team. You know, we've got new, new people in there. Um, but obviously, get to know everyone. Um, most importantly, it's, you know, it's the same Tiger. It's the same Tiger family. Um, but obviously, we've pulled new people into to important roles. Um, so I'm going to try and catch up a little bit of time. Okay, so we want to talk about some of the major projects that we've achieved, because one of the things of this event is so that we can share with you some of the things you might not know that have happened. Um, but also reassure you that we've carried on with the, the important things that we should be doing. So you'll pick up there that we released the 2020 R1, which was the, the real kind of major redesign of, of PRISM to uh, enable further scalability and new features with the uh, UC and collaboration market. So we also did a huge project for us um, whilst in lockdown, um, but it was a good time to do it. We did a rebrand um, and Louise was key to that. So thank you, Louise. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, Richard joined us and really kind of formulated a, a new service management strategy for us. So again, it's all about taking the, good, the things we did well already, maybe formalizing them a little bit more, adding a bit more process, but ultimately making sure we're trying to deliver a better experience for you as our customers. Um, we've kept with the ISO 27001 uh, certification, so it should be important to all of you. It's a prerequisite, really, where we're a data company. We're handling that information for you. That's a reassurance that we're doing the right things and we get externally audited, as you do. Um, this is a big one, as Stevie talked about. We, we actually shut our HQ for 18 months. Now, we had bits and pieces going on there, but we didn't have a full kind of staff return to hybrid working for quite a long time. And, and that's very odd for us. You know, We were very much a head office business with some remote workers. Um, so we had to adapt to that like many of you did as well, okay? Um, we did the webinars. How many people in the room attended any of the webinar events? Okay, not bad. So if you haven't seen them, they're still on the website. Um, really informative, you know, there's some panel discussion about the, the data analytics market. You know, really worth going and having, having a look at, okay? Um, and then something that I'm going to ask Louise to join on stage later is around this leveling up your UC journey concept, okay? And it's part of our sort of foundations for all of our messaging and communication moving forward. And she talks absolutely passionately about it. So I think you'll all enjoy just the small bit of content that we've got from her on there. Um, and just here on the right, the October event. So we made quite a late call. We normally start preparing in about March. But actually in July this year, we said we desperately want to do this. It's an opportunity to get you all here. And so we appreciate the time today. Um, and to, to our team, I know how much effort goes into it. It's, it's a huge sort of task for us to undertake, but we absolutely love it. So um, let, let's uh, make a great day. So um, we sat down and started talking about strategy. Um, you know, what, where do we want Tiger to be for you in, in two years, in three, five years? And ultimately, we have a vision which is to empower you to make better data-driven decisions, okay? We're dealing with more data than we ever have done before. Um, it's a move from telephony only into UC, into collaboration, and we can see even further around some of the, you know, the analytics and insights that's coming from, from providers like Microsoft and Zoom. You know, there's a lot more information, and, and hopefully you can all benefit from that. And you might not know one of Louise's... Uh, Great lines, you don't know what the exam question is yet, and I'm hopefully she's not going to say that later. Um, but hopefully, <laughs> you can say it, wait, wait, no. Um, so what are our strategic pillars though? So we've got three key ones. The first one is product. So if you haven't already met Phil and Steve, you know, these two guys are solely focused on what we do for you product-wise, where we're going, what the direction is. Um, we're very fortunate, I said this in one of our all hands last um, week, we're you know, fortunate we have people in our business who understand this domain. They know, they've known it for you know, 20 plus years. They know what should happen. They know what to do when it doesn't happen. And they know the right questions to ask. So we do a lot of that work behind the scenes so that when you actually take the product, we've already answered a lot of those difficult questions. We want to be a great company. Um, we always feel that you know, we achieve that. But ultimately, you're the judge. 
So it's your feedback, um, both to events like this. Um, Richard's going to talk about some of the net promoter score work that we've been doing. Ultimately, that's our goal, to be a better provider and, and partner for you. Um, and ultimately, our people. So looking around the room, what do we do for them? We've organized, you know, we've had to change to a hybrid, more hybrid model. You know, what do we do to keep the engagement up, make sure everyone understands where we're trying to go to? Um, and ultimately, you know, we, the same as many of you, have had people leave the business because ultimately it's opened new doors for them. So, you know, sometimes that can be a positive, sometimes it's a big challenge, but, you know, we want to create a culture that's very people driven as well. Okay, so hopefully you will see that come through. Probably the most visual thing that you'll see that's changed, um, you know, who remembers on the left hand side there some of the, the marketing and brand that we had before? So that had been around for probably about seven or eight years, um, designed by Mike's own fair hand. And you know, we loved that and customers engaged with it, but we felt it was time for us to not reinvent ourselves, but <coughs> just pull ourselves forward in a sense of who we are. So many of you will know the company name is Tiger Communications. We you know, called ourselves Tiger Communications for a long time, but we're not a communications company. We're a data analytics business. We deal with information. And fundamentally, it kind of confused some people. Um, we don't want to compete with your UC providers. We don't want to help you communicate into the outside world in a better way. What we want to do is give you the insight and empower you to make decisions. So we wanted to keep Tiger. Most people don't call 2020 Pro 2020 Pro or Prism. They call it Tiger. Um, and that's really what our identity is. So it's, it's you know, right at the center of, of that. But equally, there's that tone of voice. It's about how we, you know, share that information with you. And probably the biggest thing that came out was the messaging we had before maybe didn't fully communicate what we really do. So we spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we got straight to the point. And we used a term called work for, uh, workplace data analytics initially. Um, and that kind of resonated, but it's probably a bit more forward thinking. So it's a great long-term strategy. And Louise has done a lot of work to kind of bring that back to be, actually, let's level up and let's start where some people are and we progress through. So what did, what did you think of us? Uh, apologies to those that weren't in the room when we did this, but ultimately this is what our customers thought of Tiger in 2018, 2019 time. And we used that to really build on who, what do we think we are as a company, what's important to us, and ultimately drive our company values. And we engage with customers, with partners, with our staff, to find out what are the key messages that we want to instill in all of our staff and when we're working with you. So we love data, be inspiring, have courage, be yourself and achieve together. Okay, and hopefully with the progress that you see from the development, the way we support you, you'll see all of those are fundamental to, to how we operate. And Tiger and you is unstoppable. Okay. And we've also launched internally um, some value award winners for people that actively live and breathe those values. So a big round of applause to those people that won those at the end of last year. Some of them are in the room. Uh, yeah, apart from one, Piers. So Piers is our um, Chief Information Security Officer. So if all the ISO work we do, any security questionnaires you send our way, they go to him. And he absolutely loves it, which... <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit of a strange one, but um, I think he used it as a way to convince me I needed to buy him two Ultra 4K monitors for all the documents he had to read. So um, our success is your success. So Caroline talks about the customers that you know, obviously registered and, and joined us today, but it's important for us to share with you that we're constantly striving. You know, we, we're winning new customers all the time. You'll see across those different sectors that you will sit within, you know, we've still been very successful and we, you know, we, we've put a lot of work into that. So it's a thank you to obviously everyone that's committed to us in the last couple of years. Um, and we really, you know, we are growing. We're doing lots of things that, that are supporting that. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for some of the logos that aren't on here that we know are coming in in the next couple of months. Because, again, they're really setting the scene for where we think this, this industry is going. So... On that note, I'm going to invite Louise to come up and talk to you for a few minutes about um, you know, how we communicate and how you can level up. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. So um, Ben touched on the rebrand um, earlier, and I think it's important to stress that um, it wasn't just about a logo change and changing the colour palette for us. Um, so 
<coughs> sorry. Um, so it was about actually kind of putting the effort in to discover how we need to um, transition our tone of voice. And a lot of that was about transitioning from more kind of technical product information to more benefits-based messaging. Um, of course, we wanted to give ourselves a professional look and feel. And while we do actually really enjoy the kind of new um, look and feel of the brand, um, actually we wanted something that represented us and our direction of travel as a business. And really, um, at the core of the rebrand and uh, messaging project, it was about helping our customers and partners, i.e. you guys, to understand the full breadth of our capabilities. Um, over the years, Tiger has become known as a call logging piece of software. And we, are, we do log calls um, for people to answer inquiries. But actually, there's so much more um, to the platform and there's so much more that we're helping customers to achieve. And this project was very much about how we communicate that. Um, one of the most important things we did as part of the project was actually to interview customers and some of you in the room. So it's really great to actually put a face to a name um, and not be kind of sat on a webcam um, speaking to you. But this was a really, really powerful part of the project for us. Um, because it really helped us see things through a different lens and, and get under the skin of how you guys perceive us. Um, and out of all these customer interviews, um, the Level Up Your UC Analytics um, journey was really born. Um, so this is a concept that kind of sets out five stages of the UC Analytics journey. We start at the kind of level one, which is log and respond, um, which is that kind of core um, call logging element to help you guys kind of respond um, really quite reactively to inquiries you might get um, within the business. This moves quite quickly into report and inform, so where you might actually start wanting to be a bit more proactive about the reports that you produce and what you actually communicate to the wider business, maybe automating reports and so on. Um, we found by speaking to customers that this quite quickly can move into the analytics and the optimization um, side of the software. So um, things like looking at how you might optimize telecoms costs um, or maybe other processes within the business. And then what became really interesting was actually as we move into these kind of higher levels of level four and level five, um, really how you see data can filter down into other departments of the business and really start to engage other teams. And that really becomes quite transformational. Um, so there's a couple of customers that we were speaking to that have got great examples of this. Um, for example, Lucas um, car dealerships, where they were used, started to use data to improve customer service across all the dealerships. Also recently spoke, spoke to um, West Dunbartonshire Council and it's really quite inspiring about uh, how they're using that UC data, putting it in the hands of other departments um, to really kind of engage people and help people make decisions with that data and as Ben was saying earlier, make decisions that are better quality and make them faster. So um, this was a really powerful piece of work and something, as Ben said, we're really passionate about and the next phase has been really about how we bring that to life. Um, so we've called it our levelling up campaign and the idea being that um, you should be on the stage of that, that journey, um, either level one to level five. We appreciate it's not a linear journey and it doesn't really matter to us where you are on that journey, but we have the software to help you whether you're looking to level up. Um, so one of the pieces of work that Mike and I have been working on is a guide to levelling up your UC analytics. You will receive a link to that, um, that e-guide to download as part of all the follow-up content that's going to be shared. Um, but one of the things that we thought that would be quite fun for us to do today is actually ask our audience where you think you are on your UC analytics journey now. So obviously you've got the five um, levels to choose from. It's a case of going to menti.com and using the code that's on the screen, which is 61356769, and have a think about where you are on your UC Analytics journey and let us know, and then we're going to take a look at that, um, the results later. Yeah, just after the break. Yeah. Okay, I'll hand back to Ben. So just, just leave that on the screen for a second. Um, the next thing we'd like to do is just invite Richard down just to give you an update on our service management um, team. 
Uh, so Rich is going to talk about that. Just hopefully, I'll leave your intro slide off while everyone takes the code down. Okay, so as a quick intro, so Richard joined us in December 20, uh, 2020. 2020, yeah, nearly yeah. two years now. Um, and so he came in to actually put his arms around the entire sort of field service engineers, the technical support, and actually help us drive that forward. So there we go, there's, there's your intro slide, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah, thank you, Ben. So, yeah, nearly two years now. And I think when I came into Tiger, it was... We were doing things well, our customers loved us, you know, as you continue to do so. But what I've tried to do is bring some developments into the process, move us more towards an ITIL model, which for those that work in the IT industry will know quite well. Um, and it's ever evolving, you know, we brought in incident change, problem, all of those kind of high level processes to begin with. And as we go through our journey, we're now looking to continue to finesse and improve, improve how we handle your cases. So. The latest change that we've just brought in recently, we, um, this is our structure within the support team. So we have a support administrator, the gatekeeper, then we've got the service desk, then we've got second line and third line support. And what we're now doing is we're, we're looking at those cases and we've introduced triage times, triage targets, things like that, so that actually your case doesn't sit with one team for a long time. So it comes in, it's looked at. Quite quickly, the service desk know with 90, 95% of cases whether they can fix it. If they can't, get it onto second line. You know, second line, then no again within half an hour to an hour. Can they fix it? No, right, get it onto third line. So we get the case to the right resource level as quickly as possible to try and speed up those resolution times for you. Um, yeah, we, as I said, we brought it in about a month ago. We're starting to see the benefits of it. The restoration times are starting to drop slowly. So um, we'll keep pushing it. And uh, yeah, that'll be a benefit you'll see. And the second thing I wanted to talk about was MPS, which obviously I'm, I've been very pleased with. So... Um, about five months ago, we launched MPS. So what we do, whenever we close a case, we use Salesforce as our ITSM tool. Whenever we close a case in um, Salesforce, there's a little drop down for the, uh, for the engineer to say, yes, I'd like to send a survey. The majority of cases we do send surveys on when we close them, and we get about a 20% response rate. And currently our MPS score is 79.22. We compared that to business to business industry, and we're we're 40 points, over 40 points ahead of our competitors from an MPS point of view. So yeah, very, very pleased, puts us in the excellent category, and we want to keep improving. So when you see the surveys, please do leave your feedback, be it good, be it bad, we still want to hear it. Um, that's how we continue to get better. So there's a whirlwind tour of the most recent things from service management. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. So yeah, I, I think it's important to clarify as well, when we pick whether we send the survey or not, it's not because we think you're going to say it's good. <laughs> so um, typically it's like if you've raised multiple cases in a short period of time, for example, then we're not going to keep badgering you to fill it in. But to Richard's point, we're open to feedback. You know, I'd rather stand here and say that our customers like working with Tiger as that great company. Um, and anything we can do to improve that, you know, we're committed to do right away from Stevie all the way through the business. Okay, so um, on that note, I have tried to uh, well catch done. up was, some time. I was just going to move you. Perfect. No, thank you. Really important this morning, certainly with the Level Up campaign as well. It would be lovely to talk to each and every one of you about where you are on that. It's about sweating the asset you've already got, essentially. I'm not trying to sell you extra stuff. It's how can you use what's there? <laughs>